I'm sitting next to one of the leaders in the adult stem cell treatment for spinal cord injury, Mr. Steve Hinderer, assistant professor at Wayne State University. How long have you been into a spinal cord injury, Steve? Over 30 years. Obviously, uh, I have a passion for it, uh, to uh, be involved uh, at this level and travel this far. How long have you been um, involved with the adult stem cell treatment to help spinal cord patients? That began in uh, early uh, 2003. Uh, it was, as often these things occur, because of a patient and her family who began a journey on their own to seek different technologies for recovery. And that led him to Dr. Lima. And uh, from there, uh, ultimately his, his daughter was the first American to have the procedure. And that procedure was done in 03? Correct, April 03, or and sorry, you, March 03. What's the latest news on the daughter, five years later? Five years later, this is a young woman, C6 injury, so cervical level, meaning only partial use of the upper limbs, uh, no trunk function, no lower limbs, complete injury now goes from sit to stand with, with very minimal assistance, is, is taking steps with only electrical stimulation of leg muscles below the knee, and uh, somebody just standing there to make sure she doesn't fall. Before I came here, Dr. Lima told me that rehab was every bit as important, if not more so, than the stem cells themselves. I agree with that, and one of the things you requested of me was the criteria for being able to participate for this procedure. And one of the key components we look for as, as part of a basic screen is, are, is this individual willing to commit to a long-term rehabilitation program? And minimum criteria that I give people considering this is minimum three days per week, minimum three hours per session, and that really truly is a minimum. And so if individuals are saying, no, I just want the procedure and I want to walk, uh, say, well, you know, it's not the right choice. It ain't going to happen. It isn't going to happen without the work. The state of Michigan and the state of Florida and, and one other state, I'm told, have what they call no-fault insurance laws. Yes. Therefore, automobile insurance in Michigan and probably in Florida, uh, the law states that the insurance company has to pay for it regardless of fault. Correct. The insurance companies don't like the idea of paying for the trip to Lisbon, which is the best alternative for anybody suffering from this. What can you tell us about how the courts have handled this situation? We have uh, precedent in Michigan of uh, three individuals who retrospectively, after they have gone, have sought legal counsel and successfully uh, obtained a decision from the court that the insurer should pay for this procedure. And, and all three of them have collected? Yes. Thanks, Steve. You're and, welcome. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll chat again. Thank you.